morning. Welcome to our service this morning. We here at Grace International Baptist Church would like to invite you uh, and also thank you for being here with us today. As we look into God uh, this morning to be able to speak to us and to um, open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to accept his word so that we can take it and also be able to apply it to our lives as we live our life, especially as we look forward for this new week ahead of us. All right. Well, um, let's all go to the word to prayer first, and then we'll go to the word of God. As we today, we will be talking about can we tame our tongue? Can we tame our tongue? Father, we are so thankful for everything that you have done. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your care. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done. Because, Lord, you are great, mighty, powerful, knowing everything, can see everything. And so, Lord, thank you that you are with us. This morning, Lord, as we bow before you, we ask that you will open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts, that we can accept your word as we study it together. And so, Lord, that, that we will take it and use it for your honor and for your glory to make us better people, better servants of yours, and also, Lord, a greater testimony for you. Thank you for what you have done, what you're going to do. And continue to be, oh Father, what you've been to us last week, this week. Thank you again, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Can we tame our hearts? If you have your Bible, I'm going to invite you to open it to James chapter number three. We are going to read from James chapter number three. And we are going to read verse two to six. Verse two to six of James chapter number three. And um, if you don't have your Bible, you can just follow us on the screen as we go along. And we read like this. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. But when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey, we can turn the whole animal or the ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are stirred by a very small ruder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes a great boast what a great forest um, is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by Wow. What a portion to read this morning. And now we are going to be looking at can we tame our tongue? Can we tame our tongue? Well, here we go. Doesn't it seem at times, for me, I don't know about you, that modern life has become a circus? Doesn't it um, um, sometimes? We are the juggler, the juggler, you know, trying to manage all the family, careers, and life responsibilities. You know, that's what we are trying to do, trying to manage everything. Sometimes we are the type road walker, you know, we need to um, uh, try to walk that line between living for Christ and the consistent fall of the world. Times we are the strong man, 
wrestling with heavy burdens and temptations that are never ending. Sometimes we are the clown, but surround us everywhere. Their insanity drains our time and energy, but we simply must deal with them. Yet against this backdrop, God is there as a ringmaster, making order out of all the chaos to the extent to be turning over to him. And one of the best ways we can experience victory with him is to become a lion tamer and take control of that most vicious of beasts called the human tongue. Humankind can tame beasts and birds, reptiles and creations in the sea. Yet we cannot tame our own tongue. The scripture says no man or woman can tame his, his or her own tongue. We know how difficult it is to tame a real lion, even one raised like a pet from a frog. This makes us ask that lion or the human tongue really be tame? Well, lions are strong, magnificent creatures, but dangerous. They can turn on you suddenly and in a split seconds cause untold damage. Yet, when they are under the control of the lion tamer, they are beautiful to behold because they are quiet and, and calm like a dog, just like our tongue. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 tells us that the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Taming the tongue is vital, so we don't stumble, experience unnecessary relationship damage, or get pushed off the course that, that God set for our lives. Most people will confess they are a person who has a tongue that comes tumbling. It gets them in trouble a lot. But we need to tame our tongues. Even casual words spoken can cause us to stumble in life and experience unnecessary damage. One minute you are telling your friends at work about what God has done for you, or about our church, or sharing with them about Christ and his salvation, then just a short time later, you are telling off an other an off-color joke, or speaking an untruth, or using foul language, or using a, 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 a racial slur, whatever it is. Listen, we have to be Careful, we have to be able to tame our tongues. Typically, typically, a human tongue is around 3.3 inches for men and 3.1 inches for women. It was interesting for me when I saw this statistic because men tongue then is a little bit longer than the women tongue. According to the, the, the Guinness Book of World Records, the world's longest human tongue is 3 inches and 90.97 inches long. From the tip to the middle of the close top lip, you know, that's how they measure it. Though the tongue may seem like a simple organ, it has a wide range of purpose such as licking, tasting, assisting in chewing, swallowing, and articulating speech. Even though the tongue is very small, the Bible says it is powerful. Look what James said in James chapter 3 and verse 5. He said, consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark, referring 
to the human tongue. Although the tongue has many functions, the only function the Bible is addressing when it speaks of controlling the tongue is the role the tongue plays in articulating speech. In other words, when the Bible uses the word tongue, when the Bible uses the word tongue, it is not concerned with the actual flesh and blood organ that assist in chewing, swallowing, or lack or, or tasting, but with the manner in which we use the tongue in the process of speech. So it is addressing the words we use and the way we use words to communicate with others. So what comes out of our mouth is in an absent-minded moment can cause great damage. Our words can have unintended consequences, like weaken our marriage relationship, creating division between friends and distrust among colleagues, and alienating our children. So our words can cause us a lot of damage. We can lose our job, lose our reputation, and many other opportunities that can come can cause us, um, uh, our tongue can cause us to lose. What comes out of our mouth can cause us to experience a lifetime of regret, especially if they knock us off the course that God has for our lives. James chapter 3 and verse 6, B said, it corrupts the whole person, set the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. In other words, our lives follow the direction of our words. If we are always saying things like, I'll never... Never recover. Won't get a break. Listen. Don't be surprised that if that is exactly how your life turns out, because you are really speaking these things um, into yourself, just as absent-minded words spoken to others can damage the course of that relationship. What we constantly say about ourselves. And our lives had a profound effect on our own minds. And these self-imposed li li limiting beliefs and crippling mindset can completely alter the course that our lives take from God's intent. God's intent for our lives to be amazing. Remember, we belong to him. That's why in Jeremiah 29, 11, Jeremiah um, um, give, recalls the, what the Lord declared. He said, the Lord declares, I know the plan I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. But if a master trainer fail in taming their homegrown life, who was well fed, well treated, and raised from a cub, how can we hope to take control of the wild beast of the human tongue? James 3, 7 and 8 says this, all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man, but no man can tame the tongue it is restless, evil, full of deadly poison. We have established that the tongue has the ability to influence the direction of our lives. Like teachers influence the direction of the lives of their students. Military leaders influence the direction of the lives of soldiers. Judges influence the direction of the lives of accusers. However, we are incapable of controlling, taming, or maintaining the direction of our own tongue. So what to do 
gave it to God. Ask God to be the controller of your life. Hand the reins over to God and ask God to take the rain and tame T A N E our tongue. Listen, this morning, I know I already gave you all the wrong side and the bad side and the, the impossibility, anything that you can say there about our tongue, taming our tongue. But I would like to give you four different things, okay, to help us to understand how we can still pay attention and try to tame our tongue. The first is the T. T. It says, take it slow. Take it slow. In James chapter 1 and verse 19, it says, My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to be angry. Okay? Or slow to become angry. This verse is not talking about the speed of our words, but the speed of our response. You see, it admonished us to be strategic, thoughtful, and discerning when we speak with others. You see, we need to be slow to speak. Not slow to speak, no. But before we charge, we need to take time to think before we speak. As a matter of fact, look how the message translation of the Bible says it. It says, put this all at, at all at all intersections, dear friend. Lead with your ears, um, follow up with your tongue. Okay, so in other words, we need to listen more and then speak less. As the saying goes, we have two ears and one. So it only makes sense that we would do more listening than talking. So this is the first way that we can try to control, to tame our tongue, is to work and ask God to help us to be more of a listener than, than that one that offer or speak uh, and causes us to get in trouble. The second one is the A. Tame A. So T is to take it slow. A. Ask God for help. Listen, we cannot do it. We already established this as we started this morning, as we start to study God's word this morning. And Psalm 19, 14 says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And then Psalm 141, verse 3 said, set a, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. You see, asking God for help. You see, say, Lord, help me control this mouth of mine. Help me control my tongue. You see, we need to pray these scriptures as we ask God for his strength to tame our tongues. But somewhere along the way, we appear to have lost our understanding of the power of prayer. Last week, we spoke about the power in the name of Jesus. You see, too often we forget to pray without season and simply try to work things out on our own. However, prayer is the foundation for prevailing. James chapter 4 and verse 2 says this, You desire but do not have. So you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask who? God. You see, we need to ask God for his help. 
Therefore, if we don't pray and don't ask God's assistance, we will usually not prevail over anything that challenges us, much less taming our tongue. So therefore, we need to remember that. First, to be able to control our tongue, we need to take it slow. Secondly, ask God for help. And then thirdly, the M. The M is make the decision. Make the decision. Psalm 17 verse 3 says, Though you probe my heart and examine me at night, though you test me, you will find nothing. Why? Because I have resolved that my mouth will not sin. I have resolved. I have made a decision. I have decided. I put my foot in the sand. You see, it won't happen. The greatest gift that God has given to each of us, other than um, salvation, is the power to choose. The power to choose right from wrong. The power to choose to be kind rather than ugly. To the, the power to choose to help or ignore. The power to choose to give or to take the power to choose to love or to hate. All of these options are wrapped up in this gift of choice that God has given all of us. You see, I have to make a decision. I have to choose. I have to decide I will do it. When you and I make a decision, when you we yield our will to God and do what's right. When we choose to do something according to his will, spectacular things begin to happen. That's why Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19 says this. I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children have choice. There is power in our choice. There can also be blessing and life in making the right choice. And so if we are going to tame our tongue, we must do what David did. Pray and decide in advance to avoid sinning with our mouth with our tongue, you see. And then lastly, we have the E. E, tame. The first one we already saw was to, uh, to take it slowly. The A, to ask God for help. The M, to make the decision. And the E is to enlist the help of the Holy Spirit. You see, sometimes we have to ask for help. But you know, it always works better. Or it will, it will be easier, if I should say, if we have someone to go through it with us. Look up James chapter 3, verse 8 says, But no man can tame the tongue. It's an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. You see, then this verse does not mean that it is impossible to control the tongue. It just means that man can't do it by itself. Thankfully, we haven't been left to live life and do the hard things by ourselves. You see, we have been given the Holy Spirit as our comforter. Now, listen, we ask God for help. Yes, we do that. And then, he will give us the Holy Spirit to be with us. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. You see, wherever we need His help, He is there to help us. The Holy Spirit acts as a bit of a bridle for our mouth. When our minds are tempted to dis disengage and start running our mouth without care, strength. If we stop long enough to pay attention 
to that small voice, you're likely to hear him say, please don't go there. Or you will hear him say, please don't say that. He will cause us to remember that a kind word turns away um, wrath. He encouraged us to stand strong on the promises of God's word. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 9 says, do not repay evil for evil. Uh, or um, rivaling for rivaling, but on the contrary, bless uh, for for, but on the contrary, bless for the death you were called that you will obtain a blessing. You see, so when your own team now starts down the path of destruction, be a line, a line tamer and stop, listen to and yield to the Holy Spirit instead. He is the good ring master in this crazy life service. If we allow his direction, he will prevent us from stumbling, experiencing unnecessary damage, and will direct our course in the direction that God has planned for our lives. Listen, I prepare to close this message. Let's look at how Jesus made it clearer for us to understand. Uh, James, sorry, makes it clearer for us to understand. James said in, in, in James chapter 3, verse 9 to 12, he said, With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father. And with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Look, James asks some interesting questions here. He reminds us that our speech is controlled not by the tongue, but that the source comes from deeper within us. He tells us that you can't get fresh water from the salt water spring or, or figs from grapevine. What does this mean? Well, Jesus explained it in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34. He said, you brother vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. You hear that? Jesus reminds us that the words we speak from our mouth actually comes from the overflow of our hearts. This means that what comes of our mouth is what is actually in our hearts. When one becomes a believer, the Bible tells us that we become a new person and that the old person is dead. There is an, um, an expansion um, that the change in our speech should follow our conversation because living for Christ should make a difference in every aspect of our life. Listen, when Paul said this, when I was a child, I spoke like a child, I behaved like a child, but now I am a grown man, I will do things different. You see, before we knew Jesus as Lord and Savior, we might have been behaved in a certain way. But the Bible says when we trust Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we become a new person. And then at the expectation of that change from one to the other, we then will be able to see the growth in us. You see, if we are struggling with controlling the tongue, we must look inwards to the heart. We must repent. 
Ask God to forgive us and ask Him to transform us from the inside out until our speech reflects the work of God in our hearts. Our hearts are right. That means our tongue is stained, and the way we use our words will also be the right way. Listen, this morning, I will encourage you, God, for help. I encourage you, let's start from the beginning, to take it slowly. See, take it slowly. And then ask God for help. And then make a decision because I have to make a decision that I want to do the right thing. And then I make a decision to do the right thing. Then I have to enlist also the help of the Holy Spirit because He will be the one to walk with me through God and help me become victorious over this on thing part of the body that God has given us, which is our tongue. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor because your word is so clear. You reminded us, Lord, that you've given us a tongue, but we cannot tame it. We cannot control it on our own. We need to ask you for help. And also enlist the, the assistance of the Holy Spirit to be able to keep the decision that we make, oh Father. And so that we would be able to control it as we start it by taking it slowly. Take it slowly. Be, don't be too quick. Thank you, Father, for what you have done. Thank you for what you're going to do. Us this week, Lord, as we practice these, these four things, that we will do it with your help. And then, Lord, that we are able to testify and say, God was with me and he helped me to be able to control my tongue. Father, we do know it all starts from the heart because we have to make things right. Because once our heart is in the right place, Lord, we know that the right things come out from us. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you're going to do. And we love you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, once again, we would like to thank you for taking the time to listen to today's sermon. We invite you to join us again next Sunday at the same time. And if you would like to attend our Sunday worship service on Zoom at 11 a.m., please contact us at allbecauseofgrace at gmail.com for the Zoom invite. We will love the opportunity also to share Christ with you and to help you grow in His Word. So therefore, contact us please at allbecauseofgrace at gmail.com and we will be able to help you and pray for you and to be able to, to, to know how we can do that. This is our contact information. Please look at it and then let it be what uh, you can use and any one of these here contacts. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, and may the Lord be with you. We go through this week trying to tame our time.